you feel right now? Come on, man. How do you feel right now? Amen. It's, it's, it's hard not to feel not to feel good right now. Amen. Under the anointing of this praise and worship ministry. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you today from a subject that may not necessarily be too popular. Amen. Because it may mess with your emotions. Amen. But I want to read a few verses from Genesis chapter 7. And I want to, I want to begin at verse 12. The focus being on verse 16, but I want to just begin at verse 12. Genesis chapter 7, verse 12 says, And the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And in the selfsame day, Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah and Noah's wives, and Noah's wife and the three wives of the sons with them into the ark. They and every beast after his kind and all the cattle after their kind and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind and every fowl after his kind, every bird of every sort. And then went into, and they went in, in unto Noah into the ark. And the two went into Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. Verse 16. And they went, and they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him. Last part says this. And the Lord shut him in. And the Lord shut him in. I don't want to talk to you today about when God closes the door. <clears throat> when God closes the door. Um, we've all needed some doors open for us. We've all needed some doors open for us. At one time or another in life, we needed God to open a door for us. A door of opportunity. Uh, a door to just simply say, just give me a, a chance. A, a, a door uh, for change. We, we needed a door open for us. And likewise, we've all needed some doors closed in our lives. Amen. Amen. The open doors, we see it as a blessing. You know, knock and the door shall be open unto you. We see it as a as a blessing coming our way, but but the closed door, we we tend to see it as more of a relief. That a door would be closed is more of a relief to us. It's, it's, I don't have to bother with it anymore. We, and that's just how we see it. We, we rarely see it as being just as much a blessing as the open door. Yeah, we, we rarely do. And, 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 and sometimes we, we just tend to mistreat Miss or uh, undervalue a closed door. Yeah, the truth is, just as much as we need open doors, doors open in our life, we need doors closed in our life. Amen. Um, here we find in 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 the text, uh, chapter six, seven, and even into chapter eight to some degree, we, we find that the word tells us about Noah. It gives us uh, some indication on who Noah is in the sight of God. It says that Noah is. A righteous man, according to what the word said, that Noah is a man who walked with God. That's that's what the word says about Noah. And this Noah was given a special assignment. His special assignment or command from God was was an assignment really that was took him on a journey of faith. It, it took him on a journey of of faith. He he was told to build something that no one had ever seen. In expectation for something coming that no one else had ever seen or that no man had ever seen before. He was asked to build something that no one had ever seen before with the specific details. And, 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 and then he was building it because of something that was coming that no man had ever seen in his life before. Yeah, right. That That is a walk of faith. Amen. That, that truly is a walk of faith to to be committed to doing something and seeing something that you never ever done before. And, and yet, at the same time, the reason you're doing it 
is because the expectation of something coming coming that no one has ever seen before. That, that truly is a walk of faith. And because of the amount of time it took, it really took up a lot of his life. It's part of life's, life's journey towards, towards faith. Noah believed in what God had said, and Noah went to work. Noah believed what God had said, then Noah went to work. I, I, can I say it one more time? Noah believed what God said. Yeah. What God had commanded, and Noah went to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. People would sure ask him, Noah, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Noah simply said, I'm building an ark. Mm -hmm. I imagine there were some laughs and some giggles along the way because they may have asked him, What on earth is an ark? <laughs> and maybe, maybe Noah tried to explain to them that 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 God told me to build this ark. But what is an ark? No, no, I'm sure Noah wanted to tell them that it's a place of safety. Right, right. A, a, a place of safety for, for, for what? We're doing just fine the way we are. But Noah said there's something that's going to be coming. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And, 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 and when it comes, you're going to need an ark yeah, yeah. of safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Noah simply told them it's going to rain. Second Peter, uh, chapter two and five, latter part of that verse simply says this: and and did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, speaking of God, and preserved Noah, a preacher of righteousness, with seven others, when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly. In other words, that while it took Noah an estimated or uh, believed amount of about 100 years to build this ark. Amen. It's believed that during that same 100 years or so, Noah was preaching. Yeah, yeah Noah was, was warning. Noah was sharing the word that you needed to turn from unrighteousness yeah. to righteousness. That, that you needed to repent and believe in what God has said and how God has made man to be to be holy as he is holy. See, the whole, the whole, goal, the whole thing here was that God had looked down upon man and had got disappointed with man. Amen. Amen. He saw the condition of man on earth, and God said, if he repented God, it hurt him that he had even made man. And, and God said, I, I gotta do something. I'll wipe out all men, but I but I'll preserve the life of Noah. Yeah, yeah. Because in him he found righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we cannot underestimate righteousness. Yeah. I imagine that building, uh, I imagine during the building of the ark, they called Noah crazy. I imagine they're going through the building of the ark. They laugh at Noah. Right, right. Because none of it made sense to them. What is rain? Uh, yeah, right. I don't see any rain. And I imagine some uh, then, as they are today, will say simply words like, God ain't told me nothing about no rain. Right, right, yeah. oh, I wish I had a witness on that one. What do you mean it's going to rain? Right. Amen. And that means that man has his own mind made up. Of what man wants to do. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Man can hear the word of God come forth. And yet still reject the word of God. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden seem to be surprised when it begins to rain. Yeah. yeah. We've heard the warning not just for a hundred years. But for all of our lives we've heard the warning about it's going to rain. And, yeah. and, and God has provided an ark of safety. But, but yet man's heart will not allow him to accept God Almighty. Yeah. And trust in what God said. And he'd rather live a rebellious life. Yeah, yeah, but just like Noah, yeah, just like Noah and some of the people you are around today, though you may have built up friendships, you may have known them for a long time, but when the rubber meets the road, the truth is, you were never on the same page with them anyway. I, I know it looked like you are all on the same page. Because you did some of the same thing that they did. They did some of the same things that you did. Did. Yeah. You were involved in some of the very same things, but but the difference was that that as things were taking place in life, um, something on the inside of you wouldn't let you go as far as what they went. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, 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 you started out doing the same thing, but but you stopped along the way and they continued going because something on the inside held you held you back. Yeah, yeah. In other words, you may have crossed the line. But they drew a whole new line. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah. You, you, you drew a line. You may have crossed the line that was drawn, but 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 they drew a whole new line, but way beyond right. where they were supposed to go. You went home. Yeah. They stayed out all night long. Yeah. yeah. They were the life of the party. And check this out. You were the one they called bunk. Yeah. Yeah. For some of y'all young folk, that's a, that's 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 a word known as being boring. You know, you know when it wasn't happening. You know, you know it's the opposite of lit. Yeah. How, how about that? It, 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 it's the opposite of lit. Yeah. Yeah. You you were bunk. Yeah. When you when you were bunk, that means you were dead. You you were boring. You ain't got nothing in you. You that's what they called you. Yeah. Yeah. You were. You were bunk. I know I had a witness in the house now. Yeah, yeah. You were you were never on the same page with them in the first place. Yeah, man. Yeah, you had a seed of righteousness in you. They had a seed of rebellion oh. in them. They had no remorse, nor did they have any regret. Yeah. You said, Lord, forgive me. They said they didn't need any forgiveness. Oh. They were just being me. Yeah. You you heard I'm just being me. I'm just yeah. I'm doing me. That's yeah. that's what they said. That's why they couldn't understand when you were spending so much time building. Yeah. That's why when you were working and, and building because of what God said, they, they couldn't comprehend why you were on bending knees. Yeah. Right. Building your faith. Come on. Yeah. They couldn't understand why you spent so much time on bending knees, working, yeah. building your, your strength. Amen. They couldn't understand why you could be so dedicated to a project to something you really know nothing about, right. about something that you said was going to happen that no one else ever heard, seen, yeah. or know about. Yeah. yeah. You you stood and you walked in truth. I, and the truth be told, you've never seen rain either. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. But you kept trusting God. Yeah. And you kept on working. You trusted him. And they didn't. Herein is where we find why Noah is in an ark hmm. and they're not. Right. Because they trusted, you trusted God and, and they did not. Right. Yeah. Then came the rain. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. A hundred years later came the rain. Didn't seem like it made much sense, but a hundred years later it came the rain. Everything that you preached about, everything you talked about, everything your faith told you to stand on, yeah. now it finally shows up and, mm. and and they can't believe that it's rain. And I know a lot of us, we, we start flashing our minds about, I, I told you. Uh, <laughs> yes. Now I bet you wish you had a... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just want to talk to some real saints yeah. yeah. every now and then. Get a little bit self-righteous yeah. when God blesses them. Yeah. Get, who get just a moment of of self-righteousness yeah. when God opens up. Yeah. But God shows himself to do exactly what he said he was going to do through you when everybody else laughed at you. Yeah. Every now and again, there's a little something inside of you that makes you say, mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That make you want to, you know, kind of kind of act, act up a little bit. Yeah. But the Bible goes on and says that as he commanded Noah and his family to move inside of the ark and, and then he commanded all of those animals to come inside of the ark, there was something else that took place. And that was once it was all done, the rain began to come down and now we find the Bible says that he, meaning God, the Lord, shut the door. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's important to understand that when it comes to shutting of the door, Amen. That God should be the one in control of shutting the door. Wow. Yeah. Let, let me say it again because we, we're going to miss something if we don't. God is the one who should be in control of shutting the door. Yeah. The truth is that Noah couldn't shut the door. Yeah. He didn't have what it takes to shut that door. Yes. There are some doors in life that you don't have the ability to shut. Yeah. And you need God to shut. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm going to move on here just, just a second. God, God has to be the one to, to close the door because there's too many things that's involved with closing of the door. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Especially depending on what side of the door you're on. Right. Yeah. 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 As long as you keep doing what God told you to do, mm -hmm. amen, if there's something you need to know, that you don't have to be concerned, God Almighty, with closing the door. 
Right. Because it's not your responsibility. Preach, mm Bishop. -hmm. To close the door. Yeah. If God gave you instructions, if God told you what was going to happen, and if God told you to board up, you don't have to be responsible for closing the door. Um, there are specifics involved with closing the door. There are some things involved with closing the door. And let me let, let me let me go off off track for just a moment. For those who have flown before, you are to, they make the call to come in to the airplane. And then they tell you to please take your seat and, and to buckle up and make sure that your seat are in an upright position and make sure everyone is, is there and in. And then once everyone has boarded who needs to board, the, the flight attendant or whomever who's qualified, they go and they pull the door down and they close and they shut the door. And once that door has been shut, that door cannot be reopened. Right, right. Yeah. Once the door is shut, it cannot be reopened. If, if you didn't get on the flight because you were running a few minutes late, right. yet the door may still be at the gate, you cannot get on that plane. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's where a lot of people are at, even today. Yeah. That a door has been shut yeah. and it cannot be reopened. But the problem is, they think that you shut. Yeah. And that you have control yeah. Yeah. over yeah. the door. Yeah. Well, 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 I, I need to, to say this. Make sure that it's God who's closed the door and not you. Yeah. It's important to understand and to embrace that. I know I've said it already, but it's important to say it again because there is always someone or something that's on the other side of the door. And if we're not careful, we'll respond to who or what's on the other side of the door yeah, yeah, yeah. with our emotions. Yeah. When God shuts the door, we can remove our emotions out of it because right, right. God shut it. I didn't shut it. Yeah, yeah. And I don't have to worry about the screaming and the crying and the knocking on the door. I know it seems tough. I know it seems rough. It seems careless. But, but we have to understand God is yet in control. We, we want to be in control of everything. Yeah, we don't want to accept that. The reason why you should take comfort and peace when God shuts a door yes, sir. is because God is dealing in an area that we are not. Yes, right, yeah. right. God is seeing something that we're not seeing. Yeah. God called Noah to build it because of his righteousness. Yeah. And the whole reason he was building it was because of man's unrighteousness. Yes, sir. In other words, because there was disobedience. Yeah. See, those on the inside were the obedient. Oh. Those on the outside were disobedient yeah. to God. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let me let me move on because I, I need to say this and I'm really almost done. Three ways that the door closes. Three, three ways that the door closes. Number one, if they close it, whoever they may be, if they close it. Number two, if you close it. Number three, if God closes it. Yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah, if God closes it. If they close the door, it usually brings hurt to you. If the they close the door, it usually brings a hurt to you. If they close the door, they usually close it out of selfishness and greed. In other words, I'm closing the door so you cannot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. I'm closing the door so you can't be a part of right. selfishness and and greed. If, yeah. if 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 they close the door, amen. It can also be closed because they're jealous. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Je jealousy would shut the door. Yeah. Yeah. yeah by they. Yeah. 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 Because they don't like you. Because they don't like what you have. They don't like what you're about. They don't like where you're going. Jealousy from them will, will cause a door to close. That's why they, they, they can close a door. The next door uh, that can be closed is the door that you close. Yes, sir. When you close the door, the door might not be shut. Uh, okay. This 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 allows the problem to creep right back in. Uh, I wish I had a witness here who helped me. Left the door. Said it. No, <laughs> said it was closed, but you left the crack. Yeah. Yeah. Just to allow the issue and the problem to creep right back in. Yeah. You know good well that door needed to be shut, but, yeah. but you're... Okay, let me let me quickly. I'm 
jumping ahead of myself. It's really the same thing. Your emotions got in the way. Yeah. And you left the door cracked so it could creep right back in. Y'all know what that means. Yeah. Just some of y'all clapping right now. Y'all know. Because y'all left the door open. Y'all heard it creep. Yeah, come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes when you close the door, it makes it easy for the door to be reopened right. by you. Right, right. Yeah. Help that still means the problem Help continues. Help yeah. yeah, that means you're going in and out yeah. at your will. Yeah. Let me go back to this one again. When you uh, when you close the door, your emotions are involved. Right, right, right. Which leads to concerns about who or what's on the other side of the door. Yes. Yeah. So you, you tend to think, you tend to think. One more chance. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. 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 We tend to think one more chance. So, so, so we're in control of the door opening and closing. And you, you know, y'all. What was that song? Some y'all got me. What was the song back in the seventies when, when the lady was working all day long and her, and her, she got home and she found out that her, her man had quit his job and said he gonna open up a beauty school and. You, and you know, and he was going to do all of these things, and she told him to, to get out. Well, you might, you know, she told him to get out. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. She told him to, to get out. Huh? Go away, little boy. Go away, little boy. That's what, go away, little boy. She told him, to, go on, just go away, little boy, because all you're doing is causing me problems, and you're causing me issues, and you won't even work. You, you, what you mean you quit your job because of this? And he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start my own beauty shop. That's what he said. I'm, I'm going to do hair and things. And, and she said, that ain't going to work. And he kept on. And then he started kissing her on the neck. And finally she said, well, 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 well you go on stay. Come on, baby. You go on stay. You promise you're going to get a job tomorrow. You promise you're going to get a job tomorrow. That's why emotions get in the way of me. Okay, okay. You ready to give them one more chance when you know that door should have been shut. Then there's when God closes the door. All right. Yeah. When God closes the door, it's important for us to understand that when God closes the door, He has a plan. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. he has a plan. There are things that are are taking place that that our eyes don't see. Right. The first thing we need to know that when God closes the door, God is looking at you. Yeah. And he's looking not just at you, but he's looking beyond you. Yeah. When God closes the door, I said that he has a plan. His word tells us that we are to know that he has a plan for our life. Right. And that plan is not to harm us. Right. The plan is not to destroy right. us. But the plan is to bless us and to, to prosper us. And, and even when things are taking place and we may not fully understand, we must have confidence that when God shuts the door and he tells you to go on the inside, God has a plan for you. Yeah. Yeah, the plan is much bigger than your eyes can see. God has a plan because he has purpose in your life. Yeah, the reason yeah, why yeah. you didn't fall out when they fell out, the reason you stopped at the line when they crossed the line, the reason yeah. when they drew a new line and you couldn't go, the reason they called you both is because God's got a purpose yeah. for you. So God told you to go on the inside and God shut the door. He has a plan. He, has, he hasn't forgotten about you. Yeah, his plan is greater than our eyes can see. His his plan for us are, are, are deeper than our emotions can feel. And his plan for us is way beyond our own understanding of what we can even comprehend. God has a plan for, for us. God, God said, get into the ark. And he shut the door because of protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God wants to protect us. And, and, and when we learn that God is trying to protect us from the onslaught of what's about to happen, what's about to go, the only reason you couldn't cross the line before and go as far as you could, because God on the inside of you was protecting you. So God is saying, come on into the ark because I got protection. You don't understand. It's going to rain. I know they didn't understand that it was going to rain, but it was more than just rain coming down. Woo. The veins of the earth opened up and water was coming up. There was a flood that was about to take place. And they didn't understand. You, God is trying to protect you. But if you come on inside the ark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, God is protecting you. Can I, can I go one more, one more step further? When God closes the door, he tells you to come on on the inside. There is provision. Uh, there is provision. God always provides everything you need on the inside. If God shut the door, God is going to make sure you have everything you need. Why on earth? We always heard going up two by two going in. But now we find out on some occasions there was seven 
going in. Good God Almighty. God was making sure that everything you needed was on the inside. If it's a two by two of this kind and two by two of that kind, why, why does it have to be seven of that kind? God was making sure that you had enough. Ooh, he was providing for you while you were closed in. He's providing for you while he's protecting you. And it's all part of God's plan. Provision. Yeah, yeah. God will always provide for you. We've heard it. We've read it. And we know it. That God opens doors that no man can shut. Yes, sir. But God also shuts doors that no man can open. Yeah. That includes Noah. That includes them. And that includes you and I. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. God is in control of it all. Yeah. And once God shuts a door, hallelujah, Noah uh, couldn't go back and open it again. Yes, sir. Once God shuts doors in your life, yeah. you cannot go back and open the door on your own. Right. Right. Hallelujah. What's on the outside should stay on the outside. Right. Hallelujah. What's on the other side should stay on the other side. That, that what God is what God had intended to take place. Now, whether you're on the inside or whether you're on the outside or whether you're on the other side, good God Almighty, mm. the only thing that matters is that you're on the side that God intends for you to be on. Right. I need to say it again. Whether you're on the inside or whether you're on the outside or whether you're just on the other side of the door, you need to be what God intends for you to be. Yeah. yeah. Now, for those who do not believe, and I'm seriously done, but for those who do not believe, for those who are rebellious, for those who live unrighteously, for those who don't have confidence in Christ, yeah. I want you to know that you still have time to trust in Jesus yeah. as your Lord and Savior, as, as your ark of safety. Yeah. Yeah, as, as your protection, as your as your guarantee for eternal life. Yeah. You see, the ark was simply a picture of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The way the ark was laid out, the way that it was built, even what they know as the pitch that laid in between the woods. The word pitch really breaks down to salvation. Yeah. And all it is is pointing to Christ. So as long as we're in Christ, mm -hmm. hallelujah, you're safe and you have safety in him. Yeah. Well, I, I want you to know that, that you still have an opportunity Hallelujah. To come on the inside. Yes, you need to know that the door is still open. Yes. But I need to warn you today. As Moses, as Noah warned those in his day. Amen. And as many have warned throughout all the generations of the earth. You need to know that at one point in time. When your eyes finally close. Yeah. When there's no more breath left in your body. Yeah. Amen. That's the definite sign that the door has closed. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. And you won't have another opportunity. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because at the point of death, your decision has already been made. Yeah. Yes, You've already chosen whether you want to be in Christ or not. Yes, Hallelujah. So that's why there's a warning right now. That while the door is still yet open, come on and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yeah. While the door is yet open, go ahead and change your unrighteousness in for righteousness. While the door is yet open, why don't you go ahead and call out the name of Jesus? All that call on the name of Jesus, the Bible says, shall be saved. You have an opportunity to get to know him in a personal relationship. Hallelujah. So why don't you trust in him while the door is yet still open? But I got news for you. Every day that you live is a day closer to the day you die. Right. Every day that you live is a day that's closer to your eyes won't open again. Right. Every day that you live is another day closer that the breath will be out of your body. But can I tell you, if you trust in Jesus right now, you go from life unto life. Good God Almighty, you go from life on the earth to life in the ark. Have I got a witness here? If you trust in him today, would you let you know that God will have the door open for you? But when it's time for your door to close, no man can open that door. And when God shuts the door, it is shut for good. Your decision will be made. Somebody ought to shout yes. Because you know your mind in the ark of safety. You know you trust in Jesus Christ. And you know you have a peace. In spite of what the world may be going through and how the world may be living, you have a peace because you already know you're riding on the inside of the ark.
To accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. The bottom line is the door is going to close. Yes, sir. It'll close on everybody. Mm -hmm. It'll close on you too. Yeah, Would you trust in him today? You should come run and ask him, what must I do to be saved? I say call on the name of the Lord yeah. while he is yet nigh. Yeah. Amen. While the door is yet still open, would you trust in him? He's a God who, who loves. He's a God who has so much grace. There's nothing that you have done that's so bad that he cannot forgive. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he, he's forgiven thieves. He's forgiven adulterers. He's forgiven murderers. He, he has forgiven backstabbers. He, he has forgiven. He has forgiven and he has forgiven and, and, and you're no different than, than any of them or any of us. You need. You say, I haven't done all those things. And you may think that you don't need forgiveness. Then you're in a worse state. Than what I can probably even explain. Because you're in a state of self-righteousness. You are carrying or living under the righteousness of the Pharisees. And the Bible says that except your righteousness exceed that of the Pharisees. Self-righteousness, the, the hypocrite. Then, then there are no wise that you can even enter into the hell. So, so, so what I'm saying is that you've lied, you stole, you you've done something, you've been deceptive, you've done some things that classifies you as unrighteous. Yeah, yeah. Therefore, because of that, you need salvation. Yeah. Jesus Christ is the only one who extends salvation. That's right, that's right. Hallelujah. Would you trust Him today? Would you trust him today to be your Lord and Savior? Hallelujah. While the door is yet still open. Because the door will close sooner or later. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that you would first forgive us of our sins. Lord, forgive us in the name of Jesus, oh God. We're grateful that your grace is much bigger than our sin. So God, we call upon your mercy. And we say thank you, God, for forgiveness. We pray now, God, not just for us, oh God, but we pray, God, for those who are not saved, those who don't know you, those who laugh at the church, who laugh at you, oh God, who laugh at your word. We pray, God, that you would give them the opportunity, God, move within them now, God, while yet, while the door is still yet open. God, and bring salvation. Your desire is that men will be saved. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would bring salvation, oh God, that you would touch every heart, that you would give them that opportunity, oh God, to realize that they stand in need of eternal life. Now, Lord God, would you use us as your modern day knowers? Father, that we can build and build and build that others may come and ask why we're building. God, and give us the opportunity to share the goodness of the Lord. That you are the one who saves. That you are the one who provides. That you are the one who makes ways. That you are the one that we should put our hope, our trust and confidence in. Now, Lord God, we pray that you would not only give them strength, oh God, to fight off things that are holding them back. But God, we pray that you would just guide them right on into your ark of safety. God, and give them comfort, peace, and joy of knowing that they have eternal life with you. God, we pray now, God, even for this ministry and all ministry, oh God, that you would bless, oh God, and strengthen, oh God, that we can maintain our focus, oh God, that we would never forget to share the gospel, that we would never forget to share the word that man can still be saved. Use us, oh God, as your vessels to lead others to Christ Jesus. Lord God, we thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning at Straightway Christian Church. Once again next Sunday at 10 a.m. on Facebook Live, or you subscribe to our YouTube channel where our weekly sermons are posted so that you don't miss out on the message God wants to bring through this church. You have an opportunity to be a blessing to this ministry by visiting our website at straightwaychurch.org. To make a donation, click Give. You can 
can also use getting the Tithely app on your phone. That's T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. We do offer curbside pickup for our members who would like to give. We offer it on Sunday afternoons from 12 to 2. Your gift helps us continue to serve this community in God's kingdom and is greatly appreciated. Thank you again for tuning in to today's broadcast and for being part of our family.